Hey, what's up? It's Jake from Nimbus DevOps, and the next thing we're going to be going over is managing authentication methods with HashiCorp Vault. So last time we created a policy. Um, policies are attached to tokens. Vault generates through its various authentication methods. And so now we're going to manage these authentication methods with the Vault UI. Um, just know that when you're doing policy authoring, that's what it's called, it requires understanding the paths which map to the Vault API endpoints and any available actions for each path. So you need to be very familiar with what that looks like for your organization before you try to start trying to do uh, policy authoring. So um, before a client can interact with Vault, it has to authenticate against the auth method to acquire a token, which you've seen here um, when we're trying to access Vault and you try to, to log into something and it's like, hey, I need to get a, uh, a token, right? So you generate a token, I go to the URL, and then I can log in. So that is one authentication method. The token has a policy is attached to it, like I said, so the behavior of the client can be governed. Um, so we're going to enable and configure the app role auth method. Uh, one important note is, as with secrets, engines, and policies, auth met methods are also tied to a namespace. So auth method enabled on the admin namespace is only available to the admin namespace and generates a token available to use against only that admin namespace. So let's talk about personas. Uh, this, the Basically what we're going to do in this is we're going to involve two personas an admin persona and an app persona. So what is a persona? So admin is the vault admin with privileged permissions to configure an auth method. You could think of admin like a person, right? So it's like a persona. App is its own persona, which has its own policies, its own engine, its own access, its own auth methods. And for app, it's gonna be the vault client that consumes secrets that are stored in vault, okay? So uh, just like all my other stuff that builds on each other, I'm assuming you've already connected to Vault cluster, created a cluster, all that stuff, and made Vault policies. Um, I will be using the tester policy. So under admin, if I go to policies, you'll have this tester policy. We're going to be using that. So make sure you have that before you get started, and then we'll go ahead and go. So uh, first thing up for the persona admin. So I'm in the admin namespace here. Um, we're going to enable the app role auth method. So before you can use it, obviously, it has to be created. So if you go to secrets here, um, make sure, again, you're in the admin namespace. Um, or I'm sorry, not secrets, access. We're going to enable a new auth method. So right here is my token, right? We're going to enable a new auth method. And for this auth method, we want to select app role. Okay, so you got Java Web Tokens, OADC, TLS, all these other things, tons and tons of things. We're going to use App Roll for today. Okay, so um, the path, you can just leave it as App Roll and just click Enable Method. So don't change anything, okay? And we should see, where is it at? There's a... Um, an App Roll button here. We can look at the current config before we actually, those are all options. So this is the current config right now. Okay. Um, so now we can create a role with a policy attached. All right. So the next thing we need to do is when we, when we, if you can see here where the path is, um, when we enabled it, it mounts it at a default location of slash auth, okay, and then slash app role. Okay, that's the path. So we're going to create a role in the app persona, uh, and we'll call it web app with a tester policy attached to it. So uh, from the web UI, we're going to create a new uh, web app role with a generated token with a TTL of one hour. So with the TTL of one hour, we can renew it for up to four hours. Um, and that's four hours from the time that it's created. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to this little guy, which we haven't used. 
this little shell here, and this is the Vault Browser CLI. And we can just execute, I'm going to paste this in here, Vault Write, and I'm going to do auth app role slash role slash web app. So this is a new one. And I'm going to give it this policy, which is already in the admin namespace, important. And I'm going to use a token TTL of one hour, and the token max TTL will be four hours. Okay. So then I can just hit enter. Success. Data written to auth app role slash role slash web app. Okay, so what just happened? So the role, now we're going to go take a look at something different. So the role ID and secret ID. Okay, so let me close this for a second. And let's just refresh this guy. All right, let's look at our configuration. So you can see I just left all this blank, right? So you don't need to worry about any of that. Um, but you do need to know that we have in here something called a role ID and a secret ID. So when you made the app role, and then we can check it used this tester policy, right? Um, you have a role ID and you have a secret ID. And essentially what that is, is you have a username and a password, basically. Um, so to get a role ID, you have to invoke that auth app role role and then whatever your role name is, role ID endpoint, and then generate a new secret ID, which you in, you invoke at same path, but secret ID. So auth app role role web app secret ID. So let me show you what that looks like, because you're probably like, what on earth is he talking about? Okay, so I've got vault read, okay, auth app role, role web app, that's what I made, role ID. So we want to read this ID, okay? So here's our role ID. That's a nasty looking role ID, right? <laughs> so now we can generate a new secret ID for this. If I go vault write force okay so overwrite it auth app role role web app secret id and this is doing it specifically why how does it know because it's doing it specifically for this web app role okay so now i have a secret id perfect so the the dash force by the way um i'm using a write operation and I'm not specifying any data values, so uh, it's just going to generate that without the values. You can set parameters like CIDR list and have a whole bunch of other parameters that you can stick in there. Um, but for now, I'm keeping it simple. So basically, it's just a username and a password. So the acquire role ID and secret ID are basically your credentials that you're trusted application uses to authenticate with Vault. Um, so with role ID, it's good to know, like I said, it's similar to username. So you're going to get the same value for a given role. So in this case, like web app role has a fixed role ID. OK, so this this doesn't change. Um, the secret ID, it's similar, like I said, to a password. And Vault generates a new value every time you request it. So every time you request this role or this uh, web app secret ID, it's going to change every single time, which is kind of cool because it's just rotating constantly. So we can test and validate this. So um, we're going to switch over to using our app persona. So in your brain, just kind of switch to app persona. And uh, the client, in this case, is our, our web app, uses a role ID and secret ID passed by the admin to authenticate with vault so if web app doesn't get a role id or secret id um, then you have to check that out so here's how we're going to do this uh, we're going to use the cli and i'll just use this guy right here again get out of there and we're going to have to do some kind of nasty code stuff here it's not going to be very fun vault write off 
slash app role slash login. Okay, and I'm going to go role underscore ID equals, and then in quotes, my role ID. I'm going to copy this here and I'm going to paste it there, end quote. And my secret underscore ID is going to be this secret value there and then hit enter and I can see key value here's my client token so I can log in with my token uh, my policy my metadata my role name my lease duration whether or not it's renewable all that stuff pretty cool huh so um, the most important part is the client token because uh, Vault returns a client token with default and tester attached to it, and you can store the generated token in an app variable name. So I could do like export app underscore token equals, and then like this client token, like this in quotes, like that. And then I have this environment variable. Uh, export args equals hmm let me do it from my computer so I already have all this set up okay so now I can access secrets at secret test web app and I can authenticate with this app token so I can go vault oops in all caps vault underscore token which I already have set equals, and then I'm going to use a variable app underscore token vault kv get secret slash test slash web app. So let me explain what this is doing. So I I already have a vault token set, and I set it for when I went to the command or went to the the web UI, and I just copied the vault token, and that has a time to live. So it's going to expire soon anyways. But what I can do is I can set my vault token environment variable to the environment variable app token. And then I can use that to run the command vault key value get and then this secret. OK, and I should get some metadata back if that token in fact works. I'm going to go ahead and wait for this. And there you go. So here's my API key, for example. So this is just another way we're getting a little more into the weeds with how to use these tokens. So you can think of scenarios where you have a web application that has an API key and how it might get that with the use of variables. And that was how basically how that variable would work. So anyways, uh, if you have any questions, let me know. But if you want to learn more about the app role method, there is a uh, site here um, I'll put this link in the video description um, that describes how all this works and you can do it with cloud you can do it with all kinds of different stuff um, but essentially how to do a, an app role pull authentication so yeah I will leave this to you feel free to use it abuse it and let me know if you have any questions and if not then I will see you in the next one